So just recently I got really nostalgic, like probably most people do from time to time. And I was thinking about the good old times, the golden era of YouTube, when you could still add friends on YouTube and send them messages. And YouTube basically more felt like a mixture of Facebook and what YouTube is now. And yeah, it wasn't all about watch time. It was more about connecting with people. So it's really the golden age of YouTube basically for me. And I was thinking about some YouTubers that I've been watching at that time, like the Mystery Guitar Man, or also Charlie is so cool like, who was by the way the first British um, YouTuber who reached more than 1 million subscribers on YouTube, which is um, pretty impressive in my opinion. And so I was basically looking for Charlie and the content he has created lately. And I clicked myself on his channel and the first thing that I noticed was this image. And the first moment I basically thought that this was a joke, but not because I think that trans people are a joke, because um, I know a lot of trans people and even have some trans friends and they actually understand their struggles. And I don't think that it is actually pretty hard to understand and accept them as uh, what we are basically. But uh, Charlie has also been a comedian. When I first saw this image, I just thought that maybe he dressed up as a girl or a woman to basically do a kind of humor that he couldn't do as a man or that wouldn't be half as funny as if he did it um, as a man. So um, for a first second, basically, I thought that this was a joke. But uh, when I've seen that there's only one video on this channel, and uh, at that point, I wasn't sure whether it's the official channel, because uh, it might be some, some fan channel or whatever. But when I noticed that there are also 2.11 million subscribers on this channel, so I noticed, of course, that it's the original channel. And it didn't take me long to, of course, understand that uh, Charlie, as many other people also lately, um, made a transition or became a trans person. I'm not even that surprised, I must say, because Charlie was always a sensitive person and a very creative person. And yeah, also, also a slim person, so uh, he wasn't looking like the typical bodybuilder or something like that. So really, Charlie wasn't the kind of person where you are surprised in the end um, if he comes out as a trans person or says that he um, doesn't like the gender that has been assigned to him at birth. So that wasn't really that surprising. Um, I can still remember that when Ellen Page, uh, who is now Elliot Page, when she came out, I was more surprised, basically. Um, I didn't watch all of her movies. Um, I watched some of them, like Inception, where she is in there. But I played Beyond Two Souls several times because I really liked that game. I really loved that, that game. And yeah, in her case, it was a little bit uh, surprising. Um, because she's not the kind of woman where you would think that she is not happy with being a woman or where you would think that she would make a transition. Yeah, be because in most cases, or maybe not in most cases, but many cases, um, it's quite obvious that people are struggling with their assigned gender and they're not quite happy with it. Or they are seen as unattractive. So um, there's basically not no reason not to transition for these people. But in um, Ellen or now Elliot Page's case, it was a little bit uh, surprising to me. But uh, yeah, that's, that's one thing, of course. But this actually made me wonder about a lot of things. And that is, lately I've seen that there are a lot of people coming out as trans. And I meet more and more people who are trans or um, people I used to know for, for a long time come out as trans. And there are so many trans people now that I'm uh, really wondering where we're all coming from. And I was thinking that maybe there have always been trans people, they just didn't come out, as there were also always homosexual people. For instance, if you look uh, into ancient Greece or Rome, there were always um, a lot of homosexuals, and there are also a lot of um, vases and, and paintings where you see homosexuals. Therefore, it's not quite as many people imagine, because... Um, Always or, or very often, homosexuality gets portrayed as a very positive thing in ancient Greece and ancient Rome. But it's not that easy because uh, well, it was uh, respected and accepted, um, or at least much more so as it was um, in the Middle Ages, for instance, or um, of course in the Third Reich. So uh, it was accepted, but it wasn't really something that, that people would applause on because um, 
yeah, m many people have uh, this idea in their head that old Greece or old um, Roman was super homosexual, and that's not com completely wrong, but um, it's not quite as extreme as it often gets um, portrayed or people imagine it. And yeah, I was thinking maybe um, these people have always existed and we just came out or we just started to, to live in a society where you can come out as a trans person. That's of, that's of course one thing that ran through my mind. But uh, then again, I also thought, is it maybe also because of um, the media that things have changed or that people play a lot of video games or maybe it's it's also um, the things that we eat. I don't really know. But, but this were some things I've been thinking about and it really reminded me of a very interesting talk I had with a woman that is working at a vocational training center. So she's basically working with people that have disabilities and there were also a lot of trans people there, but they weren't there because we are trans, we were there because we had um, psychological issues, but we were talking about another thing, which is also really interesting and that is people with autism there because uh, the interesting thing was that uh, she, she has been working there for I think 12 years something something like that 12 maybe even 13 years and the interesting thing is that when she started there she was mainly working with people who have bodily disorders or body bodily handicaps so people who are sitting in a wheelchair um, or stuff like that and these people became rather fewer or at least in percentage so and there were more and more autistic people and she, she told me that uh, over the last 10 years, um, the percentage of autistic people of the whole spectrum of that vocational education center just raised by um, 200 or 300 percent, something like that. So um, the autism rate raised from, I think, like six or seven percent, she said, to um, about 30. And the interesting thing about that, which was why, why I was making this, um, this connection there, um, she also didn't know where, where this is coming from because um, I was wondering where do all these trans people come from? What does people cause in modern society to become trans? And um, she also couldn't say why there are so many autistic people. She had a lot of ideas like um, people spending a lot of time at PCs and being lonely. And that's why we don't develop um, social skills. Then there are, of course, always these people who are saying that vaccinations are the cause or the, the reason why, why people get autistic. And I think that's um, pretty much bullshit. I, I don't believe in that. But there are a lot of people who, are, who think that um, it's because of vaccinations. It could be our nutrition, what we eat, of course. Um, yeah, there, there are many things and we discussed uh, that a little bit and she basically had the same ideas like I did and I also said maybe, maybe it's because people don't make these um, bodily experiences anymore that uh, children don't go out so much anymore and we spend more time inside and that makes them um, autistic or or rather likely to get uh, a diagnosis as, as autist, which are two things again. And yeah, we, we are we're discussing that, but uh, the interesting thing uh, is she, that she didn't know that and no one else really also did because she was also working with psychologists there and we all noticed that there are so many more autistic people there, but we all didn't know where we are coming from. We had a lot of um, common ideas where these people are coming from, but we, we really couldn't tell and that's really strange. And yeah, it's, it's the same with, with trans people. So, as I said, again, I don't have any problem with, with uh, trans people and I don't think that uh, being trans in itself is a handicap. Um, the social stigma, of course, that often comes with it um, can be a handicap. I, I don't think uh, we have to discuss that because um, that's pretty obvious in my opinion. I basically really was was uh, wondering where all these people come from and um, yeah, maybe, uh, I also thought maybe it's a generational trauma. Like um, as a boy, when you grow up, you used to get told that uh, boys shouldn't show feelings. And in German, we have uh, a saying, for instance, ein Indianer kennt kein Schmerz. An Indian, uh, and, and now not the Indians in, in India, but the Indians in America, um, or the Native Americans, as we would call them now, um, an Indian doesn't know pain, um, stuff like that. And uh, basically, um, you were really supposed to be always hard, to be always strong, not to feel. And um, yeah, but it's, it's also quite uh, suppressional because um, I, I can really relate uh, with, with many trans people because uh, I often feel, felt the same actually, that uh, society is, society is um, pretty restrictive, that um, the gender roles are pretty strict and very often it just gets portrayed like it's only women who are suffering from this. 
but uh, the thing is with women that because of um, emancipation, women basically, in my opinion, have a much wider range in which we can act. So we can be very girly, we can act like typical women, but we can also be in business positions, we can act like men, we can be strong. And I, I don't see the same thing for men actually going on because um, the image of men is pretty much unaltered still and the expectations didn't change that much. And yeah, I really hated that as a child. I um, am kind of okay with it as, as an adult, but still don't like it. So I, I really can understand uh, most trans people because I, I also didn't like uh, the typical role that uh, you get assigned as, as a boy in this society. Um, the only difference between me and these trans people is that uh, trans people do not only not like the role that they're assigned to, and uh, that a boy is supposed to act like a boy and a girl is supposed to act like a girl. Uh, we also have a bodily topic that uh, we feel um, they should be having breasts or um, a vagina or a penis and it, it just doesn't match with them. And I never really had that problem. I um, just didn't like um, the, the stigma of the very strict ideas in society that, that uh, come with one gender or the other. So I can really understand trans people but um, yeah, I, I just don't have that, that bodily thing. Um, yeah, and uh, the thing is, actually even back then, when I told that, uh, many people said, yeah, when you have to transition and do this and that, and that would actually have been a very, very bad idea in my case, um, because I, I was not unhappy with, with being, um, and at and atomically being being a male, I was, I was just unhappy with um, having to act like a male and having all these expectations that I just felt don't match me or don't, don't match my my personality. And um, I think if I had done um, a transition, I would have been very sad with that. And yeah, I've also seen a lot of other people on the internet and they have been talked into transitions. And now usually I am for transitions. Um, if a person feels like that, I think they should be allowed to live the way they want to live. But there are also many people who get talked into this. And really, if, if uh, some crazy people had talked me into uh, getting a transition or whatever, I really would have been into um, great psychological terror because of that, because that would have made me struggle quite a bit. And yeah, I would have been super unhappy with that. But uh, that's just another thing that's, that's going through my mind, actually. There are so many things that I could put into this video, but then it will be super long and I don't want to make a super long video. But um, as, as you can see, this actually cost some um some ideas in me because i, I really was was thinking uh, again um where do all these people come from and i, I don't know maybe, maybe there's a there's a clear um answer to that and if you have a clear answer to that or if you have some really good facts about that um feel free to to uh, just leave it in the comments because that would interest me a lot um to see um, if maybe someone can give me some some clear answers to that but yeah it just really made me think about that one conversation i had with that woman from a vocational education center um, who told me about autism or with these autistic children and that they are getting more and more and basically no one knows where they are coming from but yeah yeah but this is one thing i think that generation trauma is maybe one thing that has caused that and again, I think uh, there have always been trans people, or I, I do not only think that, um, I mean, I've uh, watched a documentary um, about that, um, I think a couple of years ago, where we showed uh, trans people in different societies and that they were not uncommon. It's maybe also a sign that we've progressed a society because we live in a, in a society where you can be open, where you can live uh, the way that you feel is right for you, where you can show, show emotions. So I think um, that so many people come out as trans is definitely not, not a negative thing. It's a positive thing um, because it shows that we have created room in society for, for trans people, which is really nice. Um, yeah, but but I, I'm, I'm not really sure whether um, it's just that uh, there have always been trans people around and now they're coming out because we feel and sense, okay, um, I'm allowed to be a trans person in the society. Um, I, I don't know it's, if it's only that or it's if it's only other things. Um, some people might also argue that uh, maybe there are more trans people or um, especially people who um, are trans from boy to girl or from, from man to woman. Um, 
because of chemistry, I mean, it that also makes sense uh, that there are a lot of chemicals in the water, for instance. And uh, of course, it also has an effect on our hormones, on our hormone, uh, hormone uh, system. And maybe it's also that, that, that people are getting um, more and more hormones they, they usually would, wouldn't have had. And uh, that's also provoking uh, transitions because I've read a very interesting art article um, like half a year or so ago, which was uh, really interesting because it was about um, testosterone levels in men these days. And uh, this article basically said that uh, now the average man in the Western society has a testosterone level of an 80 year old man like 60 or 70 years ago, something like that. Uh, which was really really crazy because that means that the testosterone level in uh, in ever on average has dropped by like 30 or 40 percent that's that's uh that is quite significant so i i also think that there is um, a biological side in that um, which might be caused by medicaments um by medical treatments that, that we undergo or also by, by by the food that we eat so I think that's also kind of uh, of a part of it because there have been so many studies that all these hormone levels have been changing quite a lot. Even polar bears, some polar bears, for instance, are getting impotent because of the chemicals that we are using here in Europe and that go into the water and then uh, make their way through the cycle of life. And yeah, this is also just, just one thing that went through my head that there might be a sociological part of it or a societal part of it. Uh, then there's a biological part of it. And yeah, it just make me really think whether there are many um, other reasons or or what kind of other reasons, reasons there are still, because uh, I, th I think that this topic is, is quite um, complex at the core, if you look at it, because there are so many things that could actually alter your perception of gender. But yeah, uh, this, this has been some of the, the uh, ideas of the thoughts that have been running through my mind um, when I've seen that. And as I told you, you can always uh, leave a comment in the comment section and tell me what you think about that. Because I think it's quite an interesting topic and I think it is one that could be and also should be discussed more often, in my opinion. And yeah, it, it just would be interesting to, to get your point of view of that. But that much about that. So yeah, I've been uh, trying to uh, figure out where this is all coming from. But uh, as there are so many factors in it, I didn't get a, um, a clear answer to that. But I think I've come to some interesting thoughts that probably are quite a part of it. But yeah, that's it about that. Um, but but how, how did I feel about that? How did I feel about Charlie becoming a woman now? First of all, um, I, I didn't have a problem with that in it uh, itself. It, it felt a bit weird at the, at the moment because as I told you, I clicked on this video and was expecting that he maybe is still making a joke or something like that. So it felt a little bit weird. Um, but I think um, at last, at, at, the, at the end of the video, I uh, probably already fully accepted um, that this is the new re reality now. So that uh, one Charlie is basically going away or, or has gone, gone from us. And now there is a new Charlie. Um, there's just one thing that made me really sad and that is that I couldn't watch all the, the old videos and now of course I also understand that part uh, of the story because um, yeah, if, if you want to be a, a woman now and you don't want to be a man, uh, it, it makes of course sense that you don't want to be seen as a boy anymore and um, it makes also sense that you take down all these videos where you are a boy. So um, we, these videos are by the way not deleted, they are just put on private. So it's not like we are deleted from uh, the internet or from this channel even, but uh, we, we can't see them anymore. And now that makes me a little bit sad. Um, yeah, because I think there are a lot of people who just would watch, want to watch um, all these old videos because there are so many moments in it that you just feel so nostalgic or where you would just want to see it again. And I think that I speak in the name of many people when I say that um, it's it's uh, a bit sad that, that we cannot see the old videos. I really don't have any problem with, with him being a woman now. Um, it's just that I can't watch all the old videos um, to get my memories back, to get some nostalgia. But yeah, of course I also understand that um, he, uh, so, sorry, uh, she or they, um, yeah, I, th I think they is pro probably the best form of addressing this. Um, we, we just don't want to be uh, seen like that anymore. But then again, I feel like it's not that easy actually because uh, 
when you have um, a followership of two million people, I mean, it's it's not only your memories and your videos. Of course, Charlie put all the work in the videos, and it's um, it's their content. So it's um, perfectly fine for me that Charlie is deciding about these videos and what's happening to them. So um, it's also no no question that that uh, it lies in their hands to decide whether they are still to be seen or not. But then again, uh, when you have a big followership of one million or two million or even more people. I just think that that these videos that you create, that you throw out on the internet, especially if you create content over many years, uh, it's it's kind of uh, kind of a collective thing in my opinion. Um, it, it's it's not only at that point that these videos are only belonging to you, but I um, I, I myself uh, get the feeling or have um, the opinion that at some point when you have um, a lot of subscribers, and um, a lot of fans, a lot of people watching your videos, that these videos become a collective thing and uh, also to, to some extent collective property, just like very old movies also become collective property, like the very old uh, Disney movies, for instance, when you watch the very old Disney movies from the 1940s, for instance, um, they're so old that they're not even under copyright anymore and you can use them. and. And at some point, there are basically some uh, public property. So, um, yeah, I, I, I know it's maybe a little bit of, of a gap I'm, I'm making there, or it's a jump over, over gap that, that I'm making there. Um, that the videos, that the Charlie's videos are public property. But uh, this is one thing that went through my mind. And yeah, as I said, I, I completely uh, accept the, the transition that has been made there. Um, I, I was just uh, wondering whether it's okay or whether it's a good thing or should be respected um, to private all these videos when it's not only you um, who is taking uh, memories in them, but also you have so many fans there. But um, good, that's, that's just uh, one thing I've been thinking about. And I, I think Charlie can do that, uh, perfectly can do that. But um, I think it's I think it's a bit difficult to to do that, but um, yeah, that, that much about that. But I can show you. Um, I still have found three of his videos on my hard drive. So one would be a song about love, uh, bread, and do it with myself. And uh, I'm I'm not quite sure whether I downloaded more of them, but um, yeah, if if you came here for the nostalgia, I can absolutely understand that. And uh, just to serve your nostalgia, I will now give you some excerpts of all these three videos. I am you, you are me, together we make a perfect Charlie. This is a song about love, bum, bum, bum. and not a very bum, bum, good bum. one, I don't know. Bum, bum, bum. But she kept on beating her bread. All the while feeling betrayed That her mother left her in this mess Of yeast, flour and dough She must taste inspiration and stop Chewing the bread of Whoa, 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 whoa It's just a shame that I hate you Bread. Bread! And it isn't perfect, but look what I've done instead. Together there's nothing that we can face. Just as long as we embrace ourselves. You know that I really, really, really love you Whoa. I really love you too Yeah, even though it's vain I think we feel the same You need to be able to love yourself But not in that way What way? <laughs> You've just had the almost imponderable joy of watching Charlie is so cool-like, which makes you like cool. 
Yeah, and I hope that uh, this could um, serve some of your nostalgia or that this did spark some nice memories. Um, yeah, I, I didn't make a very long video, also I of course won't upload any of his videos, um, not, not only for copyright's sake, but also because I um, respect that Charlie doesn't want to be seen in this male form anymore. But I thought it's a shame we cannot watch all of his videos and um, there should at least be some place for nostalgia there. So I made this little video basically showing some of his work here. Yeah. And uh, that's basically it. Um, I hope that my talk wasn't too long or too repetitive. Um, I, I will also see it when I'm cutting, when I'm editing this video, if it's too repetitive and I have to cut out some, some parts of it. I basically just wanted to talk a little bit about Charlie McDonnell, who has become a trans person now, and what I think about it and what has been running through my mind. And it would be very interesting to have a nice conversation in the comments um, what you think is the reason why there are so many trans people now or whether you can maybe suggest me or me or, and also the, um, the other people that are watching the video and are in the comment se section. Um, if you maybe can uh, su suggest us some some interesting things that we could read or some, some movies to better understand um, the topic. Yeah, because... Uh, this video is not really judging anything, um, saying trans people are bad or trans people are good or this or that. It's just really to provoke some thoughts on it and to also get some feedback because it just would be interesting to see what other people are thinking about that because I very well know my own opinion, but I don't know what other people are thinking about that or what, what everyone is thinking about that. And yeah, maybe you can enlighten me. Maybe you have some very interesting things that you can throw in to the comment section. But uh, this is one thing that just went through my mind. And I've uh, seen this video, um, I, I think, already like like two months or so ago. So it's not new to me that Charlie uh, has transitioned or is still transitioning. It just doesn't uh, leave my mind anymore because there are so many trans people out there now. And yeah, it, it always leaves the question where we are all coming from. Um, I, I, I know I, I, I know most of the reasons why people can become trans. I stated some of them in the video, but um, yeah, it's, it's just really crazy how many there, there are these, these days. And yeah, it would be interesting to see the world in, in 50 years or so. No, I don't think that, that I will become this old. I don't think that I will be living anymore in uh, 50 years. But it would be interesting to see this world just for a day. And I could imagine that maybe in 50 years, uh, being trans is a very normal thing. It's maybe not much more unlikely than having blue-dyed hair or um, going around as a goth person, for instance, or having very strange tattoos or something like that. So I, I think being, being a trans person will still be a little bit weird um, in 50 years, but probably not, not much weirder than um, much of the other stuff that is uh, going around. And yeah, it, it already has become quite quite uh, normal actually at this point, I would say. Yeah, I, I also have kind, uh, kind of mixed feelings about that. On the one hand, I, I really love it that people can now live their lives as they want to. And I think this is the way as things should always be. Overall, I would say it has more, more benefits. Um, I just get the feeling that very often um, people also get pushed into this, this area. Um, uh, some, some people are just um, a little bit sexually confused in their, in their teen years. And when we get pushed into making a transition, um, yeah, that's, that's a little bit problematic, but um, it's, it's not as problematic or as common as the, the right-winged sector um, often tries to make it look like. I, I just thought that it could be a little bit um, problematic in the future because, as I said, I never really liked um, having to act like a boy. Uh, it's, not, it's not that I had a problem with having a male body. It's just uh, that I uh, didn't like um, these stereotypes. And I could very well imagine that um, if, if I had been born in uh, 30 years from now on, so if I had been born in 2053, for instance, I could very well imagine that some people would have pushed me into this trans sector and have told me, yeah, you um, should make a transition and make this and that. And yeah, as, as I said, uh, for me, it would have been a very bad idea because I, I don't feel trans at all. It's, it's uh, When I look in the mirror, I, I don't think, oh, I, I want to become a bum or something like that. I know I'm repeating myself now, so I'm, I'm sorry for that. I'm just thinking about all these people that are unhappy out there that make a detransition again. 
and uh, yeah, but I'm just not happy with, with uh, the decision that we took in transitioning. And that I possibly could have uh, been one of them if I had enough of uh, crazy people around me who are talking me into this. So this is a little bit uh, problematic. But uh, then again, um, I, I mean, that's, that's of course um, another result that you get from making transitions easier. If you look at all the things that you do, that you had to do to transition like 20 or 30 years um, ago, it, it was much harder to, to make a transition. And I know it very well because I have some trans people who are friends of mine. So I know their struggles and uh, I know their stories, or at least um, I know a big part of their stories. So I can actually quite competently, I would say, can, can quite competently put that into perspective, I would say. Yeah, but there are always uh, two problems. Either you make it harder to transition, do not have any cases where people don't really want to make a transition or where people are just unsure. Uh, you you can, can make it harder, of course. And when you won't have uh, any or only very few cases of people who will detransition, because these are only because uh, when you have only people who are very very sure in in um, that they are trans, so um, that would be one thing. You can make it harder to transition, and then you have less detransitions. But then again, if if you do that, uh, you have more people who are unhappy that they cannot make a transition, who are unhappy that they have to live uh, their life in a gender or in a body that, that we don't like and we can't accept. And when you have health issues going in with that and uh, people committing suicide and stuff like that, because we just cannot live in, in their assigned gender and we want to change that. And if we can't or society makes it very hard for them to change and to transition, uh, you're getting these problems again. And that's why I think why um, it's actually a good idea to make transitions easier for people it's always this balance act, of course, that you will either make it too hard for people to transition or you make it uh, too easy and have too many uh, detransitions. But then again, uh, detransitions are, I think, like uh, 2% or something like that, or I think even less than, than 2% of the transitions or, or less than 2% of the people who transition um, make a detransition. So I think uh, that numbers show pretty well that uh, transitioning is in most cases uh, the best idea for these people, also the best long-time idea for these people. So I'm definitely for people uh, being allowed to, to transition and, and for making it easier to transition for these people because there are so many things that you have to discuss and talk through and, and go to psychologists and whatnot um, until you are allowed to make a transition. So it's really... Um, kind of a difficult uh, thing, at least in Germany uh, and America. I cannot tell about other countries, but uh, in, in Germany and America, I know a little bit about the process, and it really isn't easy. Yeah, but but I really don't don't want to want to discuss whether um, it is good or bad uh, to to make it easier for people to transition. Um, I just thought uh, it's quite an interesting topic, and I noticed so many people just plopping out of the ground. Um, who are trans all of a sudden. And yeah, there's this uh, reappearing thought in my head. Where are all these people coming from? Where are all these trans people coming from? Is it our history? Is it that society has changed? Is it medicaments? Is it what we eat? Is it maybe movies? Has it always been like that? And, and we were just too, too blind to see and accept that people are like that. Um, Maybe is it how we see gender that, that uh, our our view on gender is just too strict and gender is just a spectrum after all in the end. Uh, it's all things that are running through my mind. And uh, yeah, it's, it's quite an interesting complex topic there. But okay, I, I leave it at that. I leave it at that. Um, I've already said that several times now, but um, I, I leave it at this point. And yeah, maybe you can throw in some very interesting um, comments in the comment section and uh, tell me you're part of it or maybe you're, you're a trans person also and uh, you can tell me um, you, you can tell me about your experience or your point of view which which would also be interesting so yeah if you want to do that i would be very thankful for that because um, as you can see um, I, i'm not really standing on on this side or that side or being a trans person myself or so I, I just said that i can relate to it and many things that trans people say are very much understandable for me also many of the things that we are here are simply simple truths for me so um yeah it's 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 not really like i want to take any positions it's just like i'm really curious to to better understand this this topic because it has become such an awareness thing um, especially in 
Social Media and now so many LGBTQ people fighting and so on. And yeah, I'm, I'm just wondering, has it, has it always been like that and we didn't notice or did some things maybe change? And yeah, if you, if you also know about the, the autism thing, why there are so many autistic people now, um, you can also drop in some some uh, comments about that because uh, that, that's another thing that I'm thinking about quite often. And um, yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe there are some clear answers to that and I would really love it because uh, why should I discuss or, or think about things um, when there is a clear answer? Yeah, and I think uh, I think that's it now. Um, I'm, I'm really done done with this uh, video. Uh, thank you, thank you for watching. Even if it went a little bit longer than I actually uh, uh, anticipated, because uh, I thought about making a five to ten minute video, and this one is uh, probably much much longer now. I think about like half an hour or so after editing, which is pretty insane. But um, yeah, um, <laughs> okay, that much about that. So. Um, yeah, thank you for your time. Thank you for watching this video, and thank you to all the people who are giving me some inputs in in the comments. And yeah, if uh, if you don't want to miss any more of my content, you can of course subscribe to my channel. But most of my videos are in German. Uh, or if you want to have uh, some some other content, or maybe you want to make a video with me or whatever, just drop it in the comments. That having been said, thanks again for watching, guys, and hopefully I will see you in another video.